Hello, and welcome to another episode of Wheel of Horror, the podcast where two best friends normally spin a wheel once a week, and it normally chooses the horror film, but occasionally we do a bonus episode, and that's what we're doing right now. This is a very special bonus episode, though, because we sometimes get the filmmakers on the podcast. We get to do a little interview with them, and that is exactly what we're doing today. So I had the pleasure of being able to see a short horror film that was made by our guest today, Stan Alger. And uh, we're going to be talking about it. It's called Spirits Like Us. And uh, yeah, we'll be learning a little bit about that and about Stan. So Stan, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Alec. Happy to be here. Yeah, just just one thing, actually. It's it's actually Alger. Oh, Alger. Okay. No, no, it's it, it's all right. I mean, well, one of the interesting things is I, I, uh, I was a gymnast for for many many years and and what they would what they would sometimes have to ask me is they'd say oh like do you go by is it alger is it is it alger or, and then sometimes some some people would do the french pronunciation and be like oh alger i was like <laughs> no no it's um it's just classic uh like horatio alger like for alger so yeah dude no my, seriously my name i it was butchered growing up everybody called me alex nobody believed my last name was lawless i'd have to spell <laughs> it on the phone nobody's like what's your last name i'm like law less like, can you spell it i'm like just it's yeah so i get it i totally get it yeah yeah but yeah so stan welcome to the show you just said you finished your junior year at loyola uh la right is it loyola marymount la yeah i finished up my junior year at uh, loyola marymount university and yeah i mean they have a great they have a great film program there it's it's one of the top 10 in the country and you know what's what's really what's really beautiful about that place is they make sure that the students were always working on projects right from freshman year. You know some some film schools you know you do two years of theory and then you go into film projects. But for LMU, no, we're we're making projects right from the beginning, and then you own all of your projects. Uh, mm-hmm. They're yours, uh, not the universities, which is also very very nice. Yeah, that's really helpful because like you can learn so much but if you don't actually physically go out and do it you're it's just like okay cool i'm reading a book but i'm not actually doing the practice and to have that all at the end of the four years to have like a full director's reel that's really cool yeah yeah i know it's it's definitely it's definitely nice in that capacity because they do set you up really really well and they go out of their way to try and get you those internships they go out of the way to try and get you that first job and and it really shows it really shows they definitely do care about their student populace and graduates so yeah that's awesome you know i actually i got into loyal marymount in new york and it was between Mm. that and suffolk where i ended up going because i was like i definitely want to go to a city yeah yeah it's crazy i didn't know they had so many uh campuses loyola yeah i mean they they really did kind of get around those jesuits they (laughs) they really left their mark (laughs) yeah no seriously before we jump into your short film a little bit, I just want to know, like, what is your history with horror? Because this is a horror short. So are you like a big fan of horror? Do you have a favorite? Like, tell me about that. No, of course. I mean, I grew up with I watched all kinds of genres growing up. I was always, you know, a big fan of more subtle horror. I enjoyed uh, suspenseful horror, uh, something that would have a bit of a build up. Uh, you know, my, my classic go-tos were Alien in 1979 oh, yeah. with Ridley Scott. You had Jaws uh, with Steven Spielberg. I mean, if you did want to go more into the uh, psychological horror, you know, Silence of the Lambs. Uh, and also, I mean, my favorite kind ultimately at the, end, at the end of the day that wasn't done enough, but would be done, I think, at one point in time with a little bit more subtlety was uh, supernatural horror in the sense of like poltergeist. Mm like the original Poltergeist in 1982 right. uh, was, was definitely something that interests me a lot. It's, it's, it's a little bit hard to describe sometimes, but I think there's a little bit of a difference between some horror things and works that you see now versus what they were in the late 20th century or even oh, earlier. Dude. No, I mean, all the movies you mentioned, I love, so you're in good company there. Yeah. I personally, I'm a huge fan of seventies, eighties horror films. So I, I agree. There was a definitely a, a, just something special about spe- specifically the seventies. I feel like the grittiness of those horror films still hold up today in a way that mm-hmm. even movies from 20 years ago don't hold up as well as those. So I definitely agree with you on the uh, the older ones. Now, I know this is a very difficult question, and I don't blame you if you can't answer, but do you have a favorite? A favorite horror film of all time? I know, I know. Wow. Uh, I, honestly, 
I'm going to have to go with one, and it's only because it stuck with me very much as a kid. I mean, body horror is not really my go-to type, mm. but I, I know I said before I enjoy a little bit more of the classic uh, subtlety of it, not over the top. But I will say, The Fly, mm. Jeff Goldblum's The Fly, really got to me as a kid. I remember just watching that film, and I, I did have a pretty consistent set of nightmares for about two weeks because right. it just that final transformation. I don't want to spoil anything for anyone who hasn't seen the film. But let's just say the makeup effects were just out of this world on that movie. Oh, God, when his fingernails are falling off. Yeah, man. David Cronenberg, huge fan of his work. So, yeah, dude, The Fly is great. And Gina Davis, come on. Oh, of course. (laughs) But, yeah, so let's – I guess we'll transition into your film a little bit here. So it's called Spirits Like Us. And I actually was able to see it at uh, an event that you hosted, the MPA, the inaugural MPA Festival. So that was – an awesome event. I was so happy to be able to screen one of my cartoons there, but I was really fortunate. I got to see your short film because I didn't know what it was. I didn't know it was a horror or anything. So when it was over, I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm, I can't wait to talk to Stan about this. So tell me all about this. You told me a little bit about it at the festival, but the locations you got were incredible. The cast is amazing. It shot so beautifully and, you know, you wrote and directed it. So where did this idea come from? Like, what was the, the beginning for this? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate all of that, man. I, I basically, I had wanted to always do a ghost hunting story of, of one kind or another. And I've been fascinated by ghost hunting myself. I, growing up as a kid, I was always interested in the supernatural. It, there, there's another story in and of itself where I kind of have an origin for that, where I had a little bit of an encounter when I was a kid. Ooh. And I actually had a little bit of a supernatural encounter if you believe in that sort of thing. But that's, a, again, that's another story all on its own. But yeah, I just really wanted to do a film where we could explore ghost hunting and give it a little bit more of a grounded approach and give my own little take and twist to it. So Spirits Like Us came along after I had actually watched a play that was called 222. Uh, I watched it in the West End in London. Mm. And it, it had this very interesting theme. And it just was kind of like, oh, wow. I mean, it was just this very interesting theme of something similar that included ghost hunting. It was a comedy, but it, it was about ghost hunting. I was like, you know what? I should actually go ahead. And I should try and make something. So mm-hmm. I went to town and I just, with my friends, uh, we kind of formed like a little writer's room and we drafted something up. And actually what initially came about was a feature idea. And I still have the feature idea, but I said to myself, well, you know, Right now, I think that in order to help build out the concept that we want, I think a short proof of concept uh, to prove the kind of idea that we'd want to make into a feature would be better. Mm -hmm. And we can do one here in L.A. and that way we can be more active and involved on it and we can actually get it done and, you know, see where the idea goes. So we wrote it into a short form and it served as a proof of concept. We went ahead, we made it, we shot over the course of three days. And yeah, yeah, we were just... We we're very pleased with being able to help bring that to life. And we hope that it will serve as a basis for eventually tackling on that feature idea that we've got. Yeah, you know, because it, it has a very, I mean, we're, we're probably, we're definitely going to spoil some, some plot points here. Oh, yeah. But, dude, I mean, like the idea of having this be a, uh, you know, paranormal investigator whose cousin is a ghost, you know, who, who's like with her. I, I've i never seen anything like that before. I mean, you know, we've got like the Ghostbusters, obviously, you know, like a bunch of friends doing stuff like that. And then there's so many ghost adventure shows and stuff like that. But to have the angle of having, you know, a ghost companion along for the journey, I think really adds a, a different take on it. Yeah, I definitely wanted to, again, try and do something that was a little bit different, uh, you know, add a little bit of a unexpected uh, twist in its own right. And I just thought, yeah, I mean, if you have this companion who's by your side, that's kind of this constant reassurance of this world that you're trying to get into. And it's like they're the only consistent part about it. Mm. You know, it's 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 like, oh, well, am I just am I just going insane or do I do I have a nice comedic buddy by my side? And you kind of have that interesting partnership between my lead and and her co ghost hunting friend. Mm who has a very personal connection to her in the, in the film itself. But um, yeah, yeah, I just, it, it, it helps to show a consistency. It shows that unexpected twist. And yeah, again, I think that it's just, it's an interesting dynamic and duo. And 
I wanted to help explore that a little bit more. Yeah, man. I mean, just, I don't know. I, I was seeing so much potential in where this could go. You know, like even, have you ever heard of, uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark? You ever heard of that show? Yeah. Yes. I mean, dude, this feels like this could be its own show. And this is just like one little adventure that these people go on. But as they continue to go on, you start to learn more about his death or their relationship before that. I don't know. I, as I was watching it, I was like, there's so much I feel like that they could uh, expand on here. Yeah, and that's it. And that's exactly it. Like we had that. It, it's that exact idea. It's uh, if we have these two partners, uh, one of which, you know, has a little bit more of a connection with the dead being dead and then you have the one who's alive and is the actual living ghost hunter you know there's this bigger world that we want to explore and this was kind of our first foray into that no i think you guys did a really great job just setting that whole world up and you know i know you told me this at the uh at the festival but dude the the house that you guys got to shoot this in i mean it's it's what is it it's not called the murder house what's, what's it called <laughs> No, it's uh well, it's the American Horror Story estate. It's where they had they had shot the first couple of seasons at the at this house, and it's it's up in Altadena here in Los Angeles. Mm. And it was you know the interesting thing was was that it was it was on Gigster, and the lady who who manages the home, she was very very sweet, very very kind, very very nice. And uh, I, I basically just hit her up, and I was like, hey, I mean, I see that you have this home, and you're allowing you know independent filmmakers to use it and she's like yes we are and uh, she's like Did, were you interested in doing it for a film i was like yeah i was so she met up we we did a little bit of a tour and then she yeah she, we worked out a great deal for it and it was so cool like if you walk through that home like you you have like creepy dolls everywhere you have all these uh, abandoned furniture items that look like they could be cursed by some demonic entity uh, there's cobwebs everywhere. The place is creaking all the time. When we were filming, one of the problems was with sound was literally if you stepped on any kind of floorboard or creak, you were you were picking it up. It was going to be there. Jeez. But uh, yeah, I definitely I definitely think it was a really great privilege to be able to shoot. It I mean it looked fantastic. Yeah. And and what what did you guys bring? Was the doll there? Was like the painting there already? Like what did you guys actually end up bringing? Oh yeah, I mean, if there's one thing on this on this production that we that we thought we were going to have to do a lot of work on, but ultimately we didn't really have to, it was PD, it was production design. <laughs> I mean, the house basically brought the production design for us, right? And it was just, yeah, yeah, it was it was really great to see, and you know, the people that again, it's a small team of people that own and manage that estate, but the ones that do, they really put in the effort to do a good job and make sure that everything is where it needs to be. It was really, it was really, really fun. Mm, yeah no it, it it's it was great and and the church is that attached to it or is that was that a separate location the church was a separate location the church we ended up shooting uh over in orange county mm, but okay no the church itself was also very very easy to to come by again managed by a, a very sweet individual and they they literally just allowed us to go inside and film the church was entirely shot in six hours wow we we had a location change and we went in there and we did bing, bang, boom. Our actors were on point and yeah, we were able to move quick. So, I mean, the fact that you guys got this done in three days is crazy. I mean, that's very impressive. And did, was the uh, post-production, how long did that take? Post-production took, it, it took a matter, a matter of several months. It took a matter of several months because we need to be working out logistics times. My, my uh, DP and producer who I was working with, our team were split off in different parts of the country. Mm. So they had to go back home and I was based in LA. And so a lot of the time what we'd be doing was we would have editing sessions online on the computer. So I would, <laughs> we would end up using discord, believe it or not. Mm. And we would share a screen and we would go through and we would do editing sessions. And then it'd be the same thing for myself and my composer. And we would have to, go through and we would do these online sessions of being able to ultimately bring the film to life. So, I mean, so that did kind of extend uh, the, the film a little bit, but it was in, it was a definitely a very interesting way of, of being able to carry things out. And it's really kind of like a testament to the fact that you can be able to make a film and edit it pretty much in any capacity nowadays, especially entirely online, which I thought was really, really neat. But all in all, it took us about eight or so months to put it together. But, you know, everyone pulled through. Everyone pulled their own weight. And we ended up delivering on something that we're really, really proud of. Yeah, man. No, it it's, still blows me away. It took three days. And 
that that's the thing. I mean, with COVID happening, I mean, so many things went remote. So many things were done out of that pandemic that have stuck with the remote working. And yeah, it might not be ideal all the time, but it is nice to know that it's an option. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. I mean, whole world changed. So yeah. Um, and you had just brought up something that I also wanted to touch upon the uh, composer who I did get to meet as well. Um, the music's fantastic. And was this somebody that I'm, I'm, I cannot remember her name? I'm sorry. Can you remember, remind me her name? No, no, of course. Uh, Kristen, Kristen Simpson. She's an absolute genius. Yeah, she was amazing. She had done some composing on a few of the other shorts at the uh, festival as well. And now does she go to school with you? No, no, Kristen actually, uh, no, she's, she's already established in the industry. Uh, she's done a lot of professional work. She's always working on some bigger project and it's, it's ironic because I'm the one that goes to her and I'm like, Hey, you know, I, I, I got this idea that I'm working on. Would you, would you be interested in helping me out? And, you know, she's doing a documentary she's getting paid for. And I'm like, Hey, you know what? I, I've got this really great passion project. And he's like, Oh, I'll help you with it. Oh. Yeah, no, it's and it's and it's really awesome. No, she does she does an amazing amazing job. And you know, one thing that I really always I always say is cool is uh, we we are often in the same mindset and mental state. Like when we're going through a score, you know, she asks for a reference track or something small like that. I give her a little bit of information about what I'm looking at, and she just music just flies uh, onto the chart. It just flies onto the chart for her, and it's it's exactly what I imagined in my head. And when you have that sync and you don't need to go back and give too many notes, it's this great working formula and relationship. Um, and she, she does an amazing job with her work, really amazing job. That's, you know, it's so funny, the relationship between directors and composers, once they click, it's just like this unbreakable bond. I mean, like Danny Elfman, Tim Burton, Spielberg and Williams and Zimmer and, you know, and Nolan. But it's so weird that you do find so many directors that once the composer can fully understand that the director's vision and articulate that perfectly, it's just like, I don't know. It is a beautiful thing when they match like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it's a, it's a really great thing. And it's, it's, it's really cool. It's one of, in my opinion, it's one of the other cool things about the relationships that exist in this industry. It's you, you meet people and then you click on that level and then you guys go off and you do, you do great works together. Yeah, no, exactly. And I love, you know, talking to people that are going to film school and just building up their, their reel and just having this, you know, repertoire of people they work with and be like, oh, that was a great cinematographer I worked with. That was a great composer. And then bringing them along until you finally have your first feature and you have this team that's built. So it's, it's really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the other thing I want to ask you about was the uh, casting process. How did that all go? Because everybody was fantastic. Yeah. I mean, so what we did was we cast, uh, we ended up casting a wide net of different people. We used a number of different casting sites and we got a slew of auditions. We had about uh, 108 total auditions wow. um, for the film. And, you know, we went through them. We, we, we sorted through them. We did the uh, whole shebang. And, uh, and yeah. Uh, it really came down to a couple of great, great candidates that we worked with, and ultimately they they carried the film through. And it was you know, it was nice working with them because again, you know, you have some actors that you, you have to go through and you have to give either a lot of direction for, or you need to be creative with it. But one thing that worked really well on on our set was if I gave a note or or a direction. Or, you know, they were very quick to pick up on it, and they were very. Uh, easy to work with in that sense so it, it just allowed for more creativity on their end and also just allowed everything else to be a lot more a lot more magical on set so yeah no everybody was very believable so i can i can see how that worked out for you it's great and um yeah the other thing i think i'd ask this at the festival but the uh, special effects i mean the doll how did you guys do that i i, I thought it was stop motion <laughs> but it wasn't right no, it was not. It was not stop motion. It was what we ended up doing was I have this brilliant VFX friend who happens to be Canadian, and they, you know, we were pitching the idea to them. We said, okay, well, how can we make this look realistic? And he's like, all right, well, the most realistic thing that we can do about it is we can take some practical application and then place in some work in which you know we can easily green screen an object or blue screen an object and take this away. Mm. So some of the effects were practical. We ended up using magician string to lift some objects. Um, and others, what we would do was we would attach a thin green line, usually in this 
very, very light neon like tape. And we would just lift it up. And for the doll, that's what we did. We had just this very long stick. We put it behind the doll. And we did a couple test runs with our VFX editor before we ended up shooting the, the film itself. It worked brilliantly. Mm. And then we went ahead and we we take we took that same formula and then we placed it into the actual set on, uh, when we were shooting. And yeah, it worked. It worked very seamlessly. I mean, it looks amazing. And the painting, too, just floating down looks very good. That was so much fun. I, <laughs> it's, it's actually so I was actually one of the ones that was holding the green screen pole with the uh with the painting when we were doing that because the back actually kept coming down a little bit mm. uh it kept ripping so we had to have two people and everyone else was managing one role or another so in order to be involved in the scene i actually went ahead and i helped carry the other stave of the pole when we were lifting the uh when we were lifting the painting through so that was mm. kind of fun that was kind of fun to cameo a little bit in. <laughs> well i wanted to ask you the painting did, did you make that for this i did yes Wow. So, okay. So who painted that? Yeah. I mean, I actually had a, I had a friend who, who went ahead and, and, and painted the, the painting itself. Uh, well, what I did was I, I did a, a staged photo. So actually Tristan's girlfriend in the film who, who plays her, her ghost hunting partner, who's the ghost himself, his girlfriend is also a model and an actress. And she came in just for a day and we were looking for a couple people to stage the photo. And I said, would you like to be in the movie? And, you know, wh- why don't we just do this now? So literally what I, what we did was I, I dressed up in the general officer's uniform, um, Civil War uniform. And then we had her dress up in, in period clothing appropriate for the time. Mm. We set up the background and uh, we snapped a photo. And then I just sent it over to my friend and he went ahead and he painted it. That's awesome. So, do you, I mean, do you still have that prop? I do still have the prop. It's actually uh, in my bedroom. <laughs> That's so cool. I don't have it hanging up on a wall. I just have it under underneath a protective sheet. But yeah, yeah. I was like, well, I, I'm going to I'm probably going to keep this. It's a decent sized painting. It's it's yeah, it's a part of the film. Yeah, so, no, that's cool. That's always something. Yeah, that's really nice to have. It's good to keep a little bit of like a memento. It's good to keep a little bit of like a project that you've worked on. You know, it's yeah, it's nice. No, absolutely. And especially something that like so specific for that, that people see that like, what is that? And then you'd be like, oh, it's actually this film I made and talk about that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, of course. So I guess the future for you then. So I'm curious, what what's the next step with this project? And then I want to ask you about what's your next step after graduation? What are the plans? No, of course. I mean, yeah, with spirits like us, you know, as I had said, it was definitely a proof of concept for this bigger world that we wanted to focus on. Again, that dynamic relationship between herself and her, her ghost hunting partner, having the living and the dead side by side, basically taking on the world of supernatural investigation together and the challenges that can come with that through a more realistic lens. But at the same time, we're looking at ways in which we can continue to expand into other areas and other stories my team and i then helped to make that film uh, we've made other proof of concepts and the idea and the lens that we look at when we make these short films is we want to tell feature films ultimately and mm-hmm. we want to help create a sample of our work that way we can help sell it off and we can help show it to people and we can help gain support and interest in it especially as you know in this day and age where there's so many different ways to market your film and to put it online and social media and whatnot these little snippets into it are a short way to get people interested get people hooked so definitely continuing to help build the base and the platform around the world of spirits like us finish developing the feature idea that we have for it and see where we can go with that and see if we can help continue to bring that to life and see what we've worked hard on and finally have it today. But yeah, I mean, otherwise, other than that, though, in terms of school, you know, it's <laughs> I've got another year at the film school. I'm going to be doing my, I was wrapping up, I said, my junior thesis. I, I shot that, which also was another supernatural themed film that I did another proof of concept, which I screened for my university earlier this week. And then this fall, I'm doing another thesis film for my school, which will be my last, uh, ultimate capstone project before before i do enter the real world and then i got to take a bit more of a realistic perspective on uh on how to officially establish myself in the industry but you know it's one of those things where you got to keep creating work you got to keep building a platform for yourself just keep being motivated being persistent creating work and uh just keep going at it 
uh, keep directing. Well, I think that you're definitely on the right path. I mean, the festival that you set up was a great way to showcase things and to get, you know, people talking, you know. Yeah. That was going to lead me into my next question then for you. So your next project was another Supernatural short. So is that kind of the realm you're looking to get into if you had a choice? Is horror the direction or are you kind of just like, I like it, but I'll do whatever? Usually with me, what it usually is, is if there's a if there's a story to tell that's in most genres I'm interested in. But I will say I do I do tend to have a bit of a theme where I enjoy I enjoy things with a little bit of a mystical supernatural bent i mean i enjoy feel-good films i enjoy films that ultimately can have that more horror aspect to them or that more adventure thriller aspect to them that's generally the field i go in it's this adventure horror thriller kind of area this 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 genre combination that i'm particularly interested in Mm -hmm. this latest one i did was more of the adventure supernatural side of things with horror elements but uh, yeah, I love things that have that little bit of mysticism. I, I do enjoy that. I mean, that part of life fascinates me very much. In all of my projects, I usually incorporate that to to some extent uh, to help build that brand. And I, I definitely want to carry it on into future projects. It's it's really what I enjoy doing. Again, I, I, I very much grew up loving Spielberg works. And I, I love his early work, especially where it has... Uh, some little bit of magical mysticism and some of the works that he's done, you know, Indiana Jones franchise, uh, Close Encounters, even, you know, that, that very much fascinates me and mm-hmm. gets me hooked. And it's like, it's like what I would want to try and do with my projects as, to the best of my ability. So yeah, it's, 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 it's really, it's really fun. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, man. Well, that's good that you, you know, kind of the direction or the thing that you want to bring to each of your projects, which is a good. And uh, horror is cheap to me, you know, so that's, kinda, <laughs> that's always a nice way in. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Horror is one. Yeah. It's one of those things where, you know, that's the one thing that they teach you. If you ever take a producing class at a film school, that's one thing that they say is like, hey, if you want to go out and you want to make an indie feature, do horror because you're just going to have a number of resources at your fingertips and uh, you can usually get it done. And I mean, I've had friends. I have a friend of mine. He recently went to Salem, Massachusetts, where he was able to screen a a horror anthology that he did mm. that I that had a hand in helping direct a little bit. And that was, that was a lot of fun to do. So it's, it's definitely the genre you want to do if you're an up and coming filmmaker and you're like, Hey, let's go out, let's get creative a little bit here and work with something within the budget. Yeah, no, man. I, I mean, obviously I love horror. So, and yeah, uh, yeah you're from, you're from Massachusetts. So you're from a spooky area, man. New England's scary. New England is scary in its own right. I mean, you know, all of the Massachusetts individuals with their Dunkin' Donuts coffee cups driving through, yelling swears <laughs> at you all the time. <laughs> I mean, I, I grew up in that state. We've got a lot of uh, interesting, rich history. And then, you know, people think about Salem all the time, you know, witch hunting, vampires, all that jazz. But it's def- it definitely fuels creative spirit. I mean, you have, I mean, we have, we have really nice falls with beautiful foliage and leaves, and it definitely gives you into that autumn, like Halloween vibe. So, yeah, I mean, definitely, it's, it's I, I'd be interested in you know doing something in Massachusetts and helping to emulate that horror element with a with another story if it ever came down the pipeline because it would be it would be a lot of fun to go back to back to those roots and try and bring something to life. Yeah, man. I mean, that's my biggest regret about living in LA is that how much I miss autumn in New England. I mean, it's the only season out here that we just really don't get that much of, you know, in LA. Yeah, I mean, it's true. I mean, I mean, you know, sunshine, you know, most of the time 24/7 is the alternative. But yeah, it is it is nice to kind of sometimes get those full four seasons. But... And I want to go apple picking, you know. Yeah, apple picking, pumpkin picking, you know, just full shebang, all nine yards. Yeah. Well, Stan, this was a lot of fun. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. Is there anything that uh, we did not cover that you want to talk about regarding your uh, your short? Yeah, no, I think we covered it. Um, I think we did. Yeah, I really appreciated all the questions you asked. Just being able to help showcase off the project a little bit more. And uh, and yeah, yeah, no, I really appreciate you allowing me to come on, man. This has been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah, at the same time, let's uh, let's let's try and just meet up again, you know, have a lunch or something, because I'd love to hear about what what works you've got going on, what you're doing. Oh yeah, hey man, I'm always around. So yeah, we should definitely meet up because you'll be out of school soon. So yeah, when when it's your summer, we'll definitely go grab lunch for sure. 
how can people watch Spirits Like Us? Is there any way that uh, they can stream it or how can they see it? So what we're into, what, what we're going to do is it's going to be posted officially to YouTube uh, in a little bit, in a couple of weeks. Um, once we're done with, you know, any, any, anything that we've done with festivals, once it's done, we will officially post it to YouTube and people will be able to then check it out, see it at their leisure. Um, we'll be able to promote it probably on my Instagram and Instagram page itself, social media handles, whole nine yards. And yeah, just really help to continue to showcase it and get people to come see it. And also you'll be able to see a little bit more of a promotion through MPA, Motion Picture Artists of America, the film festival that we had hosted uh, last month where we screened it for the first time. Because what we also want to do is the films that we showcased, we keep um, on, on a record and we say, hey, we showcase these films and if you want, according to the people who screened them and their permission, if you want to go ahead and you want to watch them or check them out, we'll also redirect the people to those films. Mm, that's good. No, that's good. Yeah, because there's a lot of good stuff at that festival that a lot of people should check out. So this will this episode will come out in a couple of weeks from now. So I will be sure to put your Instagram and the link to uh, Spirits Like Us in the uh, description. Yeah, sounds good, Alec. All right. Well, Stan, thanks again. And thank you, everybody, for listening in. Definitely go check out Spirits Like Us. Uh, I will post the YouTube link, and we will see you all next week with something. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> we'll see you. All right, guys. Have a good one. Bye-bye.